Hello and welcome to Panty Place Morrowind. We've reached the bottom of the elevator shaft and I have fetched some water. So do the same and have a sip of water for me, please. Stay hydrated, folks. By the way, this glass is a typical glass, glass from the area that I live in. Um, the These things here outside is for when you have greasy fingers that the glass doesn't slip. And it's usually filled with apple wine, which is also known as hard cider in the US. Which is kind of weird to me, thinking that cider would be non-alcoholic by default. Because uh, for me, cider, like a strongbow or something, is obviously alcoholic. <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's something that I learned in the US. And the area around Frankfurt has kind of a tradition around making wine from apples, which we, uh, as I said, we call it apple wine instead of cider. <clears throat> so I don't actually know what, what the difference is. So we're back at the Lava River Passage. And I guess this is just... Just to head back up here. We had this one before because I remember looting the chest before I went uh, down. And this is where we came from. Also of knowledge, this is this is where he should be. So this means either we killed him or we're mm -hmm. missing something. Let's see. I think he is. So this is where the guy stood that was kind of a sentry or turret. And I still kind of want to. I still kind of want to 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 in activate these junction boxes. I still feel like this should do something. So let's see. And my assumption is that there were there were some corpses here. Let's go around. We still hear the spiders in the walls that we know from the journal. And it could be that one of these corpses actually is the person we're looking for. Well, there I'm, I'm kind of searching for s some proof, something that shows me that this is the person we're looking for. Also, I guess the... No, there's no spider here. Let's try. So this is the skull of gratitude and I'm putting it into this corpse. I put the skull on Dengot's body. I should probably come back to Florent and tell him that the deed has been done. Okay, so yes, it is. It actually was this corpse. And I guess I should have noticed when I picked up, when I looted it, that this was the corpse I was looking for. So yes, I was basically not attentive enough. This is something that might happen to everyone once in a while. Let's see, we're just wanting to get back out. This is where we had this horror moment, well, horror, horror movie moment. And now we can just say because this was actually a very nicely done level. Is this now the, yeah, this is the elevator thing. The lever seems broken. Okay, yes, I remember reading about this. So we actually need to use the other entrance. We need to go down and use the sewer exit a shortcut, which also makes sense because especially in later games, even Bethesda Softworks does this a lot. They have 
every dungeon has kind of a secret passage at the end that leads you right to the beginning. Another river passage, so you can just, you don't need to run all the way. And here the mod creator made the same. Of course it still is a little way to go because we basically have to head back and forth everything we did, did but it's not that much. That's, yeah, that's kind of a glitch, something, something that has been placed here, which hasn't properly cleaned up. It has probably been cleaned up. Oh, well, that's, so they assume that we find this after we actually finish the quest, and I just didn't notice. Well, so here, let me enable auto run and drink something. So back up we go. <laughs> the note said we should not even look around, so this is what I'm doing. Not even looking around. Also, this recharges our fatigue meter, which is also good. There we go, we arrived on the top of the elevator. And now we can just, this is again. The big cog room. Haha, <laughs> he said big cock. And this should be our entrance to the exit. Uh, let me just check. It is here, so I, was it? Oh, we can't go to there. We need to head up here. I don't know if you could have found this the other way around. If you could have just entered um, through the through the sewer from the get go. No, that's that's. Oh, that isn't that right? Isn't it here? No, this should be. I'm confusing myself again. This should be this. Yes, I need to go somewhere else. This part is a little bit confusing regarding the architecture, or uh, in other words, this part is a maze. So this should lead me up there, which is not where I want to go. So where do I, where do I want to go? Oh, uh, where the orc was, that's down here. No, that's where we came from. <laughs> yes. The lady. This should be it. Yes. This is it. Past this lava pool. Cross this thing. And then get up here. And then we're basically back to, to the passage back to the sewers and to the overworld, and then we can just... I mean, I could also just have teleported, to be honest. Just remembering that. But, uh, yeah, let's now finish our journey, right? But that's where I want to go. Oh, there is... There's a spider again. I thought we've been here before. I guess these these actually respawn. Because I'm pretty sure this all is yes, this all is still clean, and there is still the corpse of a ghost. And this area is also still riddled with corpses, so we have been here. And. 
This should. This should lead us back. And just need to find the exit, but I think it should be around here ish. If I don't misremember the map that I just looked at. Uh, here, over there, and then to the right. Somewhere here. There we go, this is our exit. Back into the Thousand Lanterns Way. Where there are, as the name suggests, a Thousand Lanterns. This also means we can just... Oh. Where is the I fell into the water ramp? There is the I fell into the water ramp. So who am I going to give? Horon is the name of the person. So let's see if we can find them. Hey, hi guard. It's so empty here. Did something happen? No, that's not far on the speed traveler. Care Just to join. Mm. He's not a slave. Time for you. you have questions. This better be important. You may speak. So many people, and none is the person I want to talk to. Go ahead, stranger. What is there this he about? is. So, Dankot is dead, but you put the skull of gratitude on his corpse. Thank you, Nighty. I'm now at ease, knowing that my good friend is watching over me. Here, take these potions as a reward. Of course, he loves us now. So let me just buy all the ingredients off of him. Okay. So that was that quest. ABC for barbarians. <laughs> and it seems like we also did. Did we see the flooded canal? I think we did not see the flooded canal. So I'm curious about that. To be honest. So I'm. Um, let's check this out. While we're already down here. We kind of half checked it. So that's the... Ah, okay. I guess that's the other way to enter. Where we've just been, isn't it? Yeah, this is another place. We haven't been here. Someone has made this their home. There's lots of... Lots of books that I can take. I think this is this is where the people who were arguing outside actually slept, isn't it? Soul gem. Filled with a rat. Flasks. Okay, so all oh, this was trapped. Good that it that, that we did not set the trap off. Yeah, let's loot this place. Get every little thing that's in here. Because that's that's the real real life of a adventure gamer. Okay, so we're over encumbered. So we're just going to drop everything at the temple. Nope, not the ghost free papers. Here. Hmm. 
that's sadly heavy armor, so I can't use it. All that nice stuff. I think it's easier to do it like this. Sadly, there is no button for drop. So I can't just hold a button and click things to drop them on the ground. In the other games, you can drop things from the inventory and then they will physically fall down. But here, the overbolt does not have any physics. Okay, I do still do have heavy things on me. Well, the books should not be that heavy. Oh yes, ten torches, they, they weigh a lot. Two knives, a jug. That must be nearly everything. I think I now have things double yard. We have the, the this, which also weighs a bit. I know I should be close to my old weight. Oh, and I made a nice stack of items here. Okay, so let's recall and check what else is in there in this little abode that someone made in the sewers. Scroll of invisibility. And a scroll of elemental burst, frost. So we just... <laughs> I, I really like what they did with this mod. It's, it's really nicely done, having this little area here. Okay, so the trap chest will be untrapped, of course. And the lock will be picked. Both honing our security skill, even though we can do a lot of picking magic. There we have it. Nice. So a nice, nice area. And this is basically around where the others were. And I assume that this is a second exit. No, it's not. Okay, so we need to run back. So that was the uh, flooded canal. Nice. Well, now... <clears throat> thinking what to do next, because there's still a bit time left in the episode, and I kind of want to end with the selling time-lapse. And I want, don't want to de deprive you of more episode time. My lips are getting very dry. So let's see, this is definitely not the letter. This is the letter that I wanted to use there. Speak, traveler. Traveler? Oh, didn't work. So we can, I'm going to do the pick up stuff in, in a bit, but first let us check our things, what we do and what needs to be done. So we've given the skull of gratitude to Dengard. We all already returned that quest and the next thing that is there is asking Caius Casadas for more quests. And since we're already on this side of Balmora, let us just head there and ask him what he wants us to do. Go ahead. Sir, do you have some orders for me? Oh, he's got lots of things, it's blue. Ready for orders? Good. Go talk to Hasfed Antibolus at the Balmora Fighters Guild. Ask him what he knows about the Nereverine secret cult and the Sixth House secret cult. You'll have to do him a favor first. Probably an ugly favor, but do it. Then get the information from Antibolus and report back to me. By the way, Hasfed is a student of Morrowind history. Take the chance to get a little education. And I have a few history books in here. Help yourself. You're welcome to them. 
No point in being part of history if you're too ignorant to understand it. So who is this Hasfet and Tabolis fella? He's drill master of the Balmora Fighters Guild. He lived in Balmora, uh, he lived in Moromid all his life, knows the natives, and talks a lot with back, back country mercenaries. He thinks of himself as a scholar, and he's particularly interested in Dwemer ruins and artifacts. Mm. Another ruin run. Not that we just did this. Can you tell me something more about the Fighters Guild? The Fighters Guild is a professional organization chartered by the Emperor to regulate it, the, the hiring and training of mercenaries. Training, goods and services are cheaper for members, and the guild stewards know where to find work. You'll have to start your service with Idis FireEye and the Balmora Guild Steward. She's new and I don't know her well. Perseus Mercius, the Eldrum Guild Steward, I know and trust, but he only handles higher ranking assignments. What can you tell me about this Nerebarine thing? Oh, some Dunmer believe that an orphan and outcast, a youth born on a certain day to uncertain parents, will one day unite all the tribes of the Dunmer, drive out the invaders of Morrowind and re-establish the ancient laws and customs of the Dark Elven nations. They call this orphan and outcast the Nerebarine, and say the Nerebarine will be a reincarnation of the long-dead Dunmer general and first consul Nord Indoril Nerevor. That sounds weird. So what's this sixth house thing then? A trusted informant says that there is a secret cult associated with some strange event, events recently. Um, most, important, most important, my informant thinks these recent disturbances are related in some way to the Nerevarim prophecies. Well, what do you know about Morrowind history? Ah, Jeanette's Sid's little book is a good place to start. I have a copy here. Take it. You might also look for On Morrowind, the Imperial Province by Era Manuel of Sunhold. Okay, we've got a little book. So, can you tell me more about this prophecy thing? <laughs> the illiterate Ashlanders pass down their customs and history in the form of poetic verses. Among the things they preserve in verse are the dreams and prophetic visions of their wise women, in particular, the verses that foretell the coming of the Nerevarine. But I don't know much about it. That's why I'm sending you to find out. Well, thanks. I think that was enough lore for this episode. So I'm going to leave it at that. So let's head back. Oh, we could also have a little uh, nap. Welcome. What may I do for you? Just have me nap here. So this one I can't take, these I can't take. So he said something about I can't take books. I mean, the books here are mine, so I guess he meant the one that I gave him. See, he has moon sugar here and a skooma pipe. So he's actually a drug addict. You would make a fine kajit, sir. There it goes. Now let's see about this fighter's guild business. Speak, traveler. I already did. You didn't react. So off to the fighter's guild we go. I guess it, they will just send us into some ruin, or they will tell us, "Can you fetch me this dwarf an artifact?" So it's the drill master, which means I much time, so be quick about it's not this. you, definitely. Wayne. By the gods, you tourists are a nuisance. <laughs> Happy to be of help. Especially when I can open all of your doors and you don't even that's him. Good day, Nighty. So you're with Caius, eh? And Caius wants information. Of course, there's a this for that involved. I require a favor first, and then I'll tell you what you want to know. So what's this favor? There are Dwemer, Dwemer ruins call, nearby called Argfund. I need to run over there and find me a little cube with a circular design and some symbols on one side. It's called a Dwemer puzzle box. Bring me back the puzzle box and I'll tell you what I want to know. Can you tell me some more about that box? The little cube I'm looking for is about the size of a fist, maybe a little bigger. 
It will be made of coppery metal with a circular design and symbols on one side and some lined marks on the other sides. That's all I want. That little cube. Well, Come on, I, haven't I hope you're not day. going to try to open it because I don't want to have Pinhead here in Morrowind, but I'm going to fetch the puzzle box for you. Well, I'm Arc Thunday. Let's see if it's on our map. It's not the one here. The, the ruins are right here. I had a different name. Uh, let me see if I can ask him about the ruins so he tells me where they are. I hope this won't take. That would be pretty neat. And there he said. I don't think he said where they were. Let's get this over with quickly. Ah, yes. The old Dwemer ruins at Arkfand are, Arkenfand are extensive on the surface and underground. Head south out of town, past the Silsfredder port, then cross bridges east over Odai River. At the signpost, head north towards Caldera. Immediately on the right, see a signpost for more like Mar. Turn right and head uphill on an old road to cross the ancient Duwemu Bridge over Foyada Mamaka. The entrance to Arkfand is on the east side of the Foyada, south of the bridge. Turn a crank on a pipe nearby to open the doors. I remember this one. Thank you. I'm going to do this. But first, I am going to sell off all of our equipment in a time lapse as ending of this episode, or as the last thing to do in this episode, and then next episode we will head off to Arkfand. So, first of all, let me real quick put this into our, or into my thing. So I have the blades, Caius Cosades gave me a quest, we asked him for quests, and he gave me a quest to get information about Nerevereen and this means get puzzle box from Arkham Thund. I don't remember the name and I don't care. Bring puzzle box to Oh, what was his name? Let me check the journal. Uh, yes, that in Fighters Guild. Also, I should use uh, I should use English capitalization, not German one. <laughs> we we capitalize every noun by default. Um, and I'm mixing that, I'm, I'm always mixing things up there. And then, well, basically we ask for the information, but I guess I don't need to write that down. And now let's start, close, let's start selling everything and see how much money we make. I will surely forget this, but we have 17,000. So I'm curious how much I will have afterwards. But as I said, I will surely forget that I started over 17,000. But if you watch this video, you will be able to check the difference. So see you in a few. I will not leave you right now. I will have a few words after I recorded the time lapse. So as I said, see you in a few. Say what you want.
And here we are, sold everything. Let's see how much we made. I still remember we had 17,000. Now we have 22, nearly 23,000. So we made nearly, we had over 5,000 gold with our selling spree. I also put the drums and the books with Caius Casades, so they are safe. I did not check the scrolls when selling, actually, but that's that. And I would say next episode, we head to Arkfund. Let's see if that place actually is here. No, it's not. So where we are supposed to head over to Caldera. Let us see if I can, I can do this next time to see how we can get there, because I will stop recording now. And in the next recording, I'm pretty sure I will have forgotten how to get there, but the journal, journal, then tells us. So this is basically it. You see me next week. I see Morrowind in, I guess, well, maybe next week also, but it will be a completely different week than you, than for you. Um, yeah, I don't know when to, when I will record next, but anyway, we will see each other next week. Bye bye. The Art of War Magic by Zurin Arctis, with commentary by other learned masters. Chapter 3 Dispositions Master Arctis said, The moment to prepare your offense is the moment the enemy becomes vulnerable to attack. Laris Shael, Knowledge of the enemy mage's mind is of the foremost importance. Once you know his mind, you will know his weaknesses. Said Mar, Master Arctus advised Cyber Septim before the Battle of the Five Bridges not to commit his reserves until the enemy was victorious. Cyber Septim said, If the enemy is already victorious, what use committing the reserve? To which Master Arctus replied, Only in victory will the enemy be vulnerable to defeat. Cyber Septim went on to rout an enemy army twice the size of his. The enemy's vulnerability may be his strongest point. Your weakness may enable you to strike the decisive blow. Marandro Ur In the wars between the Nords and the Chimmer, the Nord shamans invariably used the mastery of the winds to call down storms before battle to confuse and dismay the Chimmer warriors. One day, a clever Chimmer sorcerer conjured up an ice demon and commanded him to hide in the rocks near the rear of the Chimmer army. When the Nords called down the storms as usual, the Chimmer warriors began to waver. But the Ice Demon rose up as the storm struck, and the Chimmer turned in fear from what they believed was a Nord demon and charged into the enemy line, less afraid of the storm than of the demon. The Nords, expecting the Chimmer to flee as usual, were caught off guard when the Chimmer attacked out of the midst of the storm. The Chimmer were victorious that day. When planning a campaign, take account of both the arcane and the mundane. The skillful battle mage ensures that they are in balance. A weight lifted by one hand is heavier than two weights lifted by both hands. When the arcane and mundane are in balance, the army will move effortlessly, like a swinging door on well-oiled hinges. When they are out of balance, the army will be like a three-legged dog, with one leg always dragging in the dust. Thus. When the army strikes a blow, it will be like a thunderclap out of a cloudless sky. The best victories are those unforeseen by the enemy, but obvious to everyone afterwards. The skillful battle mage ensures that the enemy is already defeated before the battle begins. A close-fought battle is to be avoided. Fortunes of war may turn aside the most powerful sorcery, and courage may undo the best laid plans. Instead, win your victory ahead of time. When the enemy knows he's defeated before the battle begins, you may not need to fight. Victory in battle is only the least kind of victory. Victory without battle is the acme of skill. Conserving your power is another key to victory. Putting forth your strength to win a battle is no demonstration of skill. This is what we call tactics, the least form of the art of war magic. Thulidin Dirithar-Kun By tactics, Master Arctus includes all the common battle magics. These are only the first steps in an understanding of war magic. Any hedge mage can burn up his enemies with fire. Destroying the enemy is the last resort of the skillful battle mage. The battle is only a leaf on the tree. If a leaf falls, does the tree die? But when a branch is lopped off, the tree is weakened. 
When the trunk is girdled, the tree is doomed. If you plan your dispositions well, your victories will seem easy and you will win no acclaim. If you plan your dispositions poorly, your victories will seem difficult and your fame will be widespread. Marendra Sewell Those commonly believed to be the greatest practitioners of war magic are almost always those with the least skill. The true masters are not known to the multitude.